Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. I'm going to talk about what's happening here with President Obama's call for stiffer gun control. He's called today. I've got the information in front of me. The, the, the most prominent things about what the president is calling for today is a ban on what he calls assault weapons, military-style weapons, and I have banished that term from this broadcast from Focal Point. I think it's Glenn Beck said, anybody says the name Barack Obama, they're going to get fired. Now, I'm not going to do the same thing to my team, but I want to put Jan, my call screener, Rob, my director, who's totally down with this, Jeff, my producer, who's totally down with this, and I'm not going to fire anybody who uses the phrase assault weapon or military style weapon, but they will get fined. And I will get fined if you ever hear me use that term again after I explain what I am about to explain to you. And we've talked about this before, that the left knows, they understand something. If you define the terms, you win the argument. You don't even have to make the argument. If you define the terms, if you get to define them, you decide what language is going to be used for that debate to take place. You've won without having to make an argument. That's why it's been so important for the abortion industry to use the term choice. Everybody likes choice, pro-choice. You're for choice. Who could be against that? Everybody likes choice. Everybody wants to choose. I go to the ice cream store. I like to be able to choose between Rocky Road and cookies and cream and pralines and cream and you name it. People love choices. What? So they know that if they can get that term into people's heads, and they're not pro-choice, they are pro-death. So that's going to be the term I'm going to use from now on to refer to the abortion industry and abortion proponents. They are the pro-death crowd. We are the pro-life crowd. We are the pro-baby uh, crowd. We are the ones who are for equal rights for unborn uh, women. Now, the same thing is true when it comes to this gun issue. These, ladies and gentlemen, are sporting rifles. That is the terminology. It's the only term they're, you're gonna, they're going to be referred to as rifles or sporting rifles. That's the only terminology you're going to hear from now on on Focal Point. If I read a story, a new story, I'm going to change the terms. If they use the banned words in, their, in the article, I'm going to change it. I'm going to substitute more, act, uh, more accurate terms. These, ladies and gentlemen, are sporting rifles. It is sporting rifles that President Obama uh, wants to ban. So what he has um, done, what he's calling for, is a ban on sporting rifles and on high-capacity magazines. That's essentially what he's calling for. Now, what he's also calling for, he's got a whole list of executive actions he plans to take, 23 of them here. And here is a huge problem. I want to alert you to this. We'll probably cycle uh, back uh, to this. But the last... I'm looking at the list here of 23. The last three of them, last four of them actually, 20 through 23, all refer to mental health. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is where this is going. The Obama administration knows that they cannot take their guns away from us. So they're going to find some way to keep certain people that they designate as too dangerous to have weapons and ban them from getting weapons. And they're going to use this mental health deal uh, to do it. Now, what is critical about this? And so here, here is executive order number 20, release a letter to state health officials clarifying the scope of mental health services that Medicaid plans must cover. Now you think, well, nothing wrong with that. Mental health, Medicaid's got to cover it. But the question is, what in the world is that doing in a discussion about the Second Amendment? That's the point I want you to get here. There is no point in dragging this in to a conversation about the Second Amendment unless the Obama administration intends to use mental health categories, mental health categorizations to keep guns out of the hands of law-abiding American citizens. Now, one of the principles of American jurisprudence is we do not punish people for what they might do. We do not punish people for what they might do. 
We can't crawl inside somebody's head and punish them for what's going on inside their head. Can't do that. Uh, and now, here, here's the tricky part. Well, hey, let me just read the other uh, executive orders. 21, finalize regulations clarifying essential health benefits within ACA exchanges. Th those are the, the health care exchanges. So they're going to make sure that part of the essential health benefits in the state insurance exchanges are mental health benefits. So people can be screened for mental health so they can be tagged as crazy and denied the right to own weapons. Uh, Executive Order 22, commit to finalizing mental health parity regulations. I have absolutely no idea what that means. It doesn't make any difference. It's the, the dangerous thing here is the phrase mental health in connection with the Second Amendment. Uh, number 23, launch a national dialogue led by Secretary Sibelius and Duncan on mental health. Now, uh, Duncan is the uh, uh, education guy. This is about schools. So the point I want you to see here is that the last four of these all have to do with mental health. Now, here's the reason it's dangerous. If they s decide that mental health are reasons to deny, deny people their constitutional rights, it's a short step from there to identifying us, Christians, genuine followers of Jesus Christ who believe the Bible and what it teaches, tagging us as mentally ill. We're going to be tagged as, mental, as people with mental health problems. We cannot be trusted with guns. Guns are going to be taken away from us because by their definition, because mental health isn't defined anywhere in here, they get to decide who's mentally healthy and who's mentally ill. Short step before they come after people that they, they decide are, have mental health problems. You know, and Jeff Reed gave me this list of the goals, the current goals of communism, the Communist Party. Listen to this. And, and I just read you all this mental health stuff from Barack Obama. Here is goal number 38. This is the Communist Party. Transfer some of the powers of arrest from the police to social agencies. So they want social agencies to have the power of arrest. Now, a lot of cases, they already do. But here's going to be the idea. You get these social agencies, these helping professionals, mental health professionals, and they're going to be the ones now that are pulling the trigger, deciding who gets arrested and cannot be given a gun. Uh, here's the rest of that goal. Treat all behavioral problems as psychiatric disorders, which no one but psychiatrists can understand or treat. So in other words, they're going to say, look, yeah, you, you, you don't understand what we're doing here. You're not bright enough. You're not educated enough to understand what we're doing here. We have these mental health professionals. They're the ones that have the responsibility and the experience and the expertise to decide who has a psychiatric disorder. So if our mental health professionals say that every Christian in America has got a psychiatric disorder, you have no right to question them. You're not smart enough. You don't have enough education uh, to question them. Here's uh, number 39. Dominate the psychiatric profession and use mental health laws as a means of gaining coercive control over those who oppose communist goals. So that is right out of the Communist Party manifesto. Now, as you're aware, let's grab a clip, the audio clip uh, A2, Jeff, if we can grab that. Uh, this is President Obama at his press conference this morning rolling out this call for a ban on sporting rifles. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what President Obama wants Congress to do. He wants Congress to ban sporting rifles. That's what he's about. That's what this is all about. Don't listen to the bloviation. Don't listen to the redefinition. Don't listen to the fog in the air. Don't be distracted by the chaff in the air. These are about banning sporting rifles in America. Here is President Obama talking about the two of the 23 regulations he wants to roll out. These are a few of the 23 executive actions that I'm announcing today. But as important as these steps are, they are in no way a substitute for action from members of Congress. To make a real and lasting difference, Congress, too, must act. And Congress must act soon. And I'm calling on Congress to pass some very specific proposals right away. First, it's time for Congress to require a universal background check for anyone trying to buy a gun. Universal. The law already requires licensed gun dealers to run background checks, and over the last 14 years, that's kept 1.5 million of the wrong people from getting their hands on a gun. But it's hard to enforce that law 
when as many as 40 percent of all gun purchases are conducted without a background check. That's not safe. That's not smart. It's not fair to responsible gun buyers or sellers. There's no reason we can't do this. Second, Congress should restore a ban on military-style assault weapons Buzz. and a 10-round limit for magazines. Sporting rifle. The type of assault rifle used in Aurora, for example, Sporting rifle. when paired with high-capacity magazines, has one purpose, to pump out as many bullets as possible as quickly as possible, to do as much damage, using bullets often designed to inflict maximum damage. And that's what allowed the gunman in Aurora to shoot 70 people. 70 people killing 12 in a matter of minutes. Weapons designed for the theater of war have no place in a movie theater. Now he's dead wrong about this. What allowed him to shoot 70 people is nobody was there to shoot back. That's what allowed him to shoot 70 people. He was in a gun-free zone. Now think about this just for a second. He had 30 round magazines. Now, President Obama said he shot 70 people, so he hit 70 people. He shot a lot, a way more rounds than that. That means he had to swap out that high-capacity magazine multiple times. Why could he do that? Because nobody was shooting back. Uh, you know, the, the guy in um, Sandy Hook, same deal. That guy fired well over 100 rounds. He had a 30-round clip. He had to reload the clip. He had to reload the magazine numerous times because he would, and he had the time to do it. it. Takes one to three seconds to swap out a magazine. Doesn't take hardly any time at all. And what made the, the carnage so great in those situations is that nobody was there to fire back. He could have been dropped with a one shot from a handgun if somebody had been in position to use it, defend himself, and defend the innocent people. Uh, around him. You know, as Clayton Kramer said, he's a good friend of mine, and he's written a lot on the Second Amendment. He says, look, you know, all these gun control out, nobody needs that many rounds. But what Clayton points out is back in the, the riots, the Rodney King riots in 1992, there were Korean shopkeepers that had 30 round magazines in their rifles, and that enabled them to fire warning shots. They didn't have to shoot at people, they could shoot in the air. What does that mean? It saved lives back in two.